Fanatic and uh, EDG, EDG, okay. I believe. Okay, yeah, that was a 40-minute pause. That was a, <laughs> that was one hell of a break that they had there. Uh, I don't uh, envy the desk for having to fill that entire time, but they did a good job of it. But it looks like we are just getting everybody back into the lobby now and should kick off this pick ban again. Give it another shot and see how it goes. I'm not sure what we're waiting on now. All the players are back in, so. Yeah. Just looking for the okay to start things up. Should be coming soon. There we go. Looks like it's going to be kicking off now. Maybe. Oh, we're, we are in. Zillion we has see the it. Yeah, we again. can see it, but we're taking a look at the coaches as they. Uh, and now us. Now again. us. We're just waiting. Uh, it looks like KT may be having some problem banning. Uh, nope, they oh, are going to ban okay, Nidalee. So, so we're and slowly Nidalee. getting through this, guys. Bear with us. We'll just keep the camera on us for the entire game All as right, well. We'll do it. Yep. We'll just uh, we'll really give it like a radio broadcast so everyone can just imagine what's well, happening. Well, that's actually how uh, shoutcasting started. Well, yeah. See, it was. In fact, when I first started casting esports, um, streaming didn't exist. And so uh, you said the download vods. You had to uh, download. No, you had to download replay files. Well, that's what. Oh yeah, yeah. So the reason why uh, I'll give while well, we go through this a little bit of history. So the reason why shoutcasters are called shoutcasters in the first place is that there was a Winamp plugin yep. called Shoutcaster that was a radio broadcast. Because when I first started casting Warcraft three in like 2004. Uh, you, there was no way at that time to watch the games live. So if you wanted to catch a live game, there were only eight spectators. So one of them would be the caster, and then you could listen to it live like a radio production. And that actually informed, because if you listen to sports casting right now on TV, where you have a lot of visuals, it doesn't sound like the way we do it. We sound like radio broadcasters, and the reason why is because all of the old school shoutcasters 
uh, people who were working back then, like me and D-Man and Joe Miller, uh, learned how to how to cast for radio, basically. And then everybody else sort of imitated that style ever since then, which is why you hear so the play-by-play -play, like going nuts, which is and described very descriptive very quickly, which is not typically what you see when you, you watch uh, a sports match on TV. Yeah. Thank you for the insight. <laughs> God, Winamp. That's right, Winamp. Those Shoutcaster days. Shoutcaster plug-in. It's like, oh, you want to listen to that Warcraft 3 game? <laughs> go download the replay. You know what's interesting is that as we go through this identical draft so far, by the way, um, looks like we may just have the same draft here. Some days just messing around. No, what he's doing is he's spelling KT with champions. <laughs> where he was. He stopped doing that now, but KT does do that, where they do a KET in terms of the first syllable of every champion. Okay, well, it looks like we might actually have, yeah, it's going to be, oh, never mind. Last second flip, so it will be Victor. Yeah, going to be taking Victor earlier in the draft this time instead of going after the Aurelia. Of course, you could never count out the Draven for Arrow. Oh, no, not going to go for it. I would love to see that. That would be one hell of a day. We get Fabby in the NALCS, the Draven over here. Uh, we did see Draven picked up recently. Freeze played it a couple games in Europe. Yeah. Freeze loves that Draven. So does Arrow. <laughs> yeah, but the last time that they played it didn't go so hard. Yeah, well, yeah. They, they try it about once or twice a season, though. You never know when it's going to come out. It will be Ezreal and Braum. So... Completely changing up that bottom lane for KT. Yeah, it looks like they're more interested in stopping some of the possible poke damage coming in and having the escapability onto the AD carry. So pretty big divergence in the draft from KT Rolster compared to the first version of this game. And looks like we may see a twist of fate into Trundle this time. Remember, Sivir was banned instead of Trundle. That was the adaptation that ESC made to their ban yeah, phase. Yeah, very true. All right, well, Trundle does get locked in. Twisted Fate there for a top laner for someday. Aurelia's available, but Aurelia into Trundle doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Could play the Rumble, which is uh, what we've seen the Rocks Tigers do into Trundle now, and that has... Smep just loves that. Proven quite effective. Fiora being flashed right here, although I'm still not sold on that Fiora in any of these matchups. I mean, no. this Saw yesterday again yeah. from SK Telecom, and it didn't look great. Yeah, and that was Duke's VR too. Very renowned for that champion previously, and now I mean, someday's a great Fiora player also, and he's going to lock it in. But all right, I I agree with what Papa was saying yesterday about Fiora. It's like it just doesn't seem to be a great pick right now. It doesn't have that same power in the late game in a split push that we used to see. Is it fine against the Trundle? Yes, because you're not going to get your stats stolen. But KT this time really setting up for another 4-1 uh, split composition. Same thing with ESC, but tons of pick potential on the side of ESC ever. We look at the Ash Bard, Twisted Fate combination, and it's a good thing that KT decided to go for that Ezreal Braun because they're really going to need that movement ability to get out of some of these ganks, one would assume. Yeah. That is quite deadly if ESC really commits to the bottom side of the map. Even the top side, the Fiora, going to have a hard time getting out with the pillar and the gold card. Yeah. Early on, it's going to be difficult to duel with that Trundle. That jump will just rip off your HP bar. So we'll see how Someday handles this matchup. It's a very confident pickup for him to go back to this, especially with Fiora's unsuccess that we've seen. Or lack of success, I guess I should say, that we've seen lately from her. I mean, Samsung's uh, won, but it hasn't been because of Fiora. But it wasn't I can't, I can't point a finger to a single game where a team has played Fiora this season, and I've said, Fiora is a great pick here, is doing a lot for this team. It has, to me, looked very weak. Well, somebody's going to try to prove you wrong and make you say that here today, Monty. Let's go ahead and get right back into game one, ESC versus KT, take two.
right, here we go onto the rift. It's going to be Infernal Drake to kick things off. So there we go. We got a bug, but we also got an Infernal Drake to start instead of that pesky Cloud Drake. Yeah, should be good here for ESC. That's going to need less time to scale. Obviously, after they hit level six, the Ash, Bard, Twisted Fate combination can be quite powerful for controlling the Drake. Meanwhile, Ezreal and Fiora are going to need a little bit of time to become relevant. Even Trundle at least provides that pillar in some of these early skirmishes as opposed to pretty much nothing from Fiora. No real crowd control or threat. Yep. One of the things hopefully we can clarify after the game is whether or not Fizz is disabled for the rest of the day or Many if he's just passed up on by ESC. Yep. So we'll figure that one out in a little bit of time. For the time being, though, we don't have to worry about him. Of course, double TP threat going to be there from ESC. Tempt, of course, also having the destiny. And Fly is just going to be running with the ghost. So we'll see if he can keep up with Tempt, because he's going to have a pretty decent wave clear once he can get a couple items in. That Q will start clearing out those back line. Yeah, no uh, no magical journey shenanigans here at level one this time. They're both dual lanes will be swapping up into the top side and taking the small caps. Not going to be seeing anything quite as fun as we did earlier on. I'm sure Score is very thankful for that. Yes, uh, bad times were had by him. He still did okay. It did force Achani to come up, but it was also a lane swap scenario. Not going to happen right now. and. Not gonna hit that caster mini with a mystic shot either. Yep. Will arrow. Nope. It begins. This is going to be uh, your life for a while someday. Yeah, it's just, it is a bit of a mystery to me. Yes, like it's very interesting that we have both of these top laners that were affected by, very much by the QSS changes in a positive way. Yeah. Oh boy, well here comes Crazy trying to go aggressive. Gets yeah. the flash out of someday. It's Hits just... level two first. Had the pillar there <gasps> in level two. So someday not playing respectfully enough. Not counting the minions and gets himself in a bad position where he has to use that flash. So pretty poor laning play there from someday early. Well, well now we get the scuttle scuffle coming on in the mid lane. Uh -oh, it's not going to land. The score does come down on the other side of Bless. So he won't go into Tempt and will make it out. That will open up Bless to go ahead and take down that scuttle crab. Get that early vision and hit the gold pinata. All right, just get that advantage onto Someday. He's going to have to use his TP here extremely early. Yeah. As this wave gets pushed in, he doesn't really have a choice about what he's going to do. Goes back, picks up a long sword, and then TPs. Crazy's going to have quite a bit more gold to work with if he decides to back. Yeah. Man, what do you think? Should you go for the long sword there or go for the ruby crystal? Because obviously you're going to be building the phage to go for the black cleaver. Oh, God. That, I mean, that's, I, I, that's a hard call. I guess I, if you're assuming you're going to get pushed into the turret, maybe you just go ahead and take the long sword for more so reliable last, last hit. hitting. It's true. Huh. I don't know. He will be able to catch uh, a good amount of that wave, so he's not going to be too far down. And see, as we can see, Crazy's coming back as well with a long sword in the inventory. But he will have a pink that he can throw in that tri brush and cover his flank. Yeah, I don't. We'll see if he goes for the tri brush or just for the river to prevent someday from really ever walking up safely. Not knowing, yeah, he's we'll going to go in the river. So, very aggressive positioning of that ward. And that tells us right now that Crazy really just wants to keep that minion wave pushed pretty far up right now and have someday constantly. Oh, Tempt gets caught up by the cocoon. That's going to be the gravity field. He's got nowhere to go. First blood over to KT. Nice gank in the mid lane. Tempt too far forward and didn't have any vision right there. Only the scuttle crab in the bottom side of the river. So easy gank there for score, wrapping around the side. And then, of course, that chain CC. If you do not have cleanse and the cocoon hits you, the gravity field will get the secondary stun. Yep. And Fly just walked up. Didn't even have to use a summoner spell to close the gap on that one. So just poor laning there by Tempt. Yep. He might just try it again. Doesn't know that Bless is in underneath the tower. Might have he seen that person. He knows now. Yeah, here. he did. And now, yeah, now he's spotted. Okay, so he's not going to be able to get that gank. But God, that would have been uh, tilt worthy if he had just gotten ganked. You know, ten seconds later, take it down again. But nicely played. We can see that's going to be this is the Ionian boots coming in for Tempt, looking for the CDR early on. So not going to be having any power for quite some time in this Twisted Fate. 
see where he wants to go. He does have the TP, so he could go for like an early Lich Bane to try to be a split pusher, but I think at this point, you probably just want to get as much power as you can in your lane. Well, the 131 will be quite powerful late for ESC if they can actually get to that point, uh, because obviously Trundle and Twisted Fate are two of some of the best split pushers in this game, and there's not an answer on the other side, just the Fiora or the likes of KT. And their wave clear isn't great either. Not with, well, it is with the Victor, but not so much with the Ezreal. So they are really going to be dependent on playing around the Victor or pressure. Especially for the first while in this game until the Iceborne Gauntlet comes down. But comparing that to the Ash, who will be, has Volley, will be building the Runin's Hurricane. They're going to be pretty happy with the 1 3 1 here. Greedy build coming out from Arrow as well. Went for the tier straight into Call. Wow, that is really oh. greedy. Yeah, very uh, stack dependent. But he's been uh, relatively safe for the time being. Can just hide behind the Johnny without a break. Of yeah, Hasn't is. been punished yet, but with Loken hit, getting ready to hit six, could be a big opportunity for ESC's bot lane to open up. Yeah, but with Unbreakable kills. and the Arcane Shift, it's really unlikely that an arrow is ever going to actually land. And even if it does hit a Chana, he could just use the stand behind me to pop back to arrow later on. So sure. there's a lot of movement of abilities possible for the KT Arrows dual lane here. And I don't think they're going to be too broken up about any kind of early aggression that ESC puts down, especially because there's a Rek'Sai which is mostly follow-up. So as long as you don't get hit by the initial arrow or the bard ultimate, then you should be okay. Yeah. Well, Flag's gonna throw down that Chaos Storm. Shove Tempt out of lane, trying to deny him as much as he can, but able to get down to the bottom side onto Crazy, throws out the ultimate onto Sunday. He does take it down a little bit, but Grand Challenge will be completed. Flash forward, and Sunday finds a kill. Nicely played. Good roam for Hajani to help his top laner pick up a very much needed reprieve in that bottom side of the map. Yeah, Tempt also thought maybe he could make the play right there, but unfortunately he was pushed up. Now, there was the Chaos Storm down as Score goes ahead and takes the red buff right there. Chaos Storm was down, so the gate channel could not be interrupted, so it looked like he may have been able to do something, but I think he wisely canceled it as soon as he saw that there was only one tick left on the Grand Challenge, and yep. instead ESC says, okay, well, if the Chani's in the bottom side, we're just gonna punish your top lane here, which in this case has the AD carry in it, push down this turret, get a bunch of damage onto it, and then deny some of the farm here from this Ezreal, who is already gonna be delayed just due to, like you said, the stacking nature of his build. Yep. Well, they do get a good amount of damage onto the turret, but unfortunately not able to finish it off. You can see someday, Coming back off of his buy will run back to lane instead of TPing, so he's gonna lose a couple of those minions at the turret, but just going straight for the Ravenous Hydra rather than uh, early Black Cleaver. So once that AoE wave clear. Meanwhile, Crazy, Tiamat in the inventory with the Ruby Crystal, so can only assume that it's gonna be a Titanic. Yeah, interesting divergence in builds. Usually we see the Trundles go for the Titanic, only occasionally the, uh, the Hydra, but that's, that's um I've seen I've seen it both ways. I do think that the Titanic is generally better on Trundle because you can just go ahead and uh, build some tankiness after that and you're still gonna have the wave clear and be able to do enough damage. Yeah. Also it does make you more relevant in team fights if you are forced into those situations. So far, Arrow not able to pick up too much else. Let's see if he wants to go for the Iceborne Gauntlet next, or if he wants to go ahead and complete the Mana Mune. It's been a pretty popular start here for the Ezreal so far. Still just trying to stack up that call as best as he possibly can. Still a ways off before he gets that big burst in gold. Infernal Drake still standing as we inch our way towards 10 minutes, so neither team been in much of a position this is the 2v2 to go for that objective. I'm honestly surprised that ESC isn't. Oh. Wow, okay, well, Score is gonna bounce right the Score right there. Score does actually steal it away with a smite. I'm actually surprised that ESC hasn't been trying to swap lanes and put the Ash and the Bard back in that bottom side because you combine that with the Twisted Fate and the fact that you have a BF Sword into Tier Cull and you should be able to push forward and take that Infernal Drake for free. Oh, wow. Attempting a ton of damage to Chaos Storm, though, gets out of range, so it can't stick to him for much longer. 
but he is going to have to go back. We'll see if he wants to burn the TP. Rejoin the lane as Wave's getting ready to crash. Does has does have Destiny available, so wouldn't be surprised if he goes ahead and blows that summoner spell, and he's going to. Yeah. But he is starting to suffer. 20 CS down here in yeah. just 11 minutes. He's got to go back. Like you said, use that TP right now. He can't allow this chunk chunking of his turret to continue, because if he loses that as Twisted Fate, you have a lot le fewer options as to where you're going to actually go on the map, how you're going to make these ganks, because you're going to be pushed into your Tier 2 and your range on your Destiny and Gate not so much. Now we're going to try and make a play onto the top side now. Four people up there. Yep, turret's still standing, but it is pretty Somebody low. Somebody has TP, Crazy does not. Oh, boy. This uh, could be pretty bad here for Hachani. He's going to come over and try to ward. Finds Bless, gets popped up in the air. It's going to be the Cosmic Binding, but it doesn't connect him to the wall. He flashes away. Gold card comes through from Temp. Arrow to follow up. They turn off the turret with the Bard ultimate. Hachani's going to go down. Arrow trying to jump back in here. Logan's going to get aggro. Hold it for a while. He gets locked up. Temp able to finish off with another gold card in the queue. Score does go ahead and pick up the Infernal Drake, but two members fall KT, and they're going to lose that turn at the top side. Yeah, and because Score was already soloing out the Infernal Drake, KT just made a decision that, hey, Arrow, Hachani, you're on your own. We're not going to blow TP for this. And they knew that they were going to get the mid tower low, so they could trade turret for turret and then Infernal Drake for two kills, which is worth it if yep. you're KT for sure. Uh, nice ultimate there from Bard, just making Arrow very vulnerable. Loken does a good job of staying on the periphery of the turret aggro. And Tempt will pick it, the rest of it up, but at the end of the day, when you trade turret for turret, you'll trade those two kills over for that Infernal Drake, especially yeah. if you're KT and you already got two kills already. Okay, well, we'll just even up the gold total right there, except we, at the end of the day, we have the Infernal Drake and you don't. Yeah. So good shot calling there from KT. Sometimes you just have to let a couple members of your team die, save your teleport, and then commit to that actual objective. And I think they end up in the much better situation. Yeah, that 8% increase is going to be doing wonders for them, especially for Someday, who's been struggling against Crazy. Still down by about 15 CS, so that'll help him with his dual potential as he does finish the Ravenous Hydra. Yeah, it did get the kill, though. So. Oh, well, it looks like, looks like Crazy actually might be going for the Ravenous himself, has the Vamp Scepter oh, yeah. now in the inventory. So Ruby Crystal just going to be held off for a different item. We'll see where he wants to go with that. Looks like he might have just had a change of heart you know, on that back, so it's going to be changing up the build path a little bit. We'll see where he wants to go, because uh, typically what we've been seeing is that Hydra item, whether it's Ravenous or Titanic, then into the Iceborne Vault. Attempt to get snatch up by that cocoon, draws the gold card, but here comes the Chaos Storm. That's enough to keep him out of range. Fly uses the Ghost, it's not going to find anything for it, but they do get the Flash away from the Twisted Fate. I really like how aggressively Fly has been playing this lane this game. I just having no hesitation and dropping the Chaos Storm at every opportunity that he has. And he knows that Tempt can't use his ult if he's too low to actually TP and do something with it on the map. So why not just use that Chaos Storm to control the Twisted Fate? Yeah. It's a good call. Now they're going to drop down here and try and take this turret, which is already at 50% health, courtesy of Someday. Yep. We're spotted out by that pink ward, though. So Someday... That's right, you get free... 25% HP on the turret yep. because of that. And what did they lose? Absolutely nothing. Well, I wasn't sure if Plus was going to come down here, just went straight for the plugs. So someday will remain safe for the time being. I thought he might be getting collapsed. But it's uh, good for now. Blue buff goes over to fly. Too dangerous, though, with uh, Victor and Elise still around there. You didn't have any wards. They could well have been in the tri brush, for all you know. True. So instead, they double back and take the blue buff, but that feint just onto the bottom side gives Someday a little bit of extra time with the turret. It does work. Yep. Oh, he's going to go ahead and throw down the grand challenge. It's just these two alone on the bottom side, but here comes Gork. Just comes over the wall with a repel, and they finish him off. Someday, I think he would have got that one by himself, but they get the assist just for good measure, and that Fiora is starting to take off. Gets the flash out of Trundle, too. And for the first time, Achilles, we're actually seeing a Fiora do work. In this matchup right now, did have an item advantage, had the completed uh, Ravenous Hydra right there. But Someday is actually making this matchup look like it's good for Fiora and that Fiora can win the split push in the 4-1 with this particular matchup which is not something that we've seen since a lot of the changes to items like QSS, changes to Fiora came through. So also changes to the itemization where you can't freely swap between the Titanic and Ravenous Hydra, which used to be a, a big part of how you played Fiora. Yeah. Well, you can see Crazy still going to be delaying his item builds. Now going for the Glacial Shroud. So not going to be completing the Hydra quite just yet. Wants to 
get a bit of armor in the inventory to go along with that little bit of HP that he has for himself. But really going to be delaying any sort of spike that he's going to get. And we can see KT just go straight for that Rift Herald. ESC don't want to give this one up without a fight. Bless comes in with a Void Rush. Johnny stick up the front lines. The TP's coming in now from Tempt and Crazy. He gets chunked out fly, not able to find the kill. It's actually going to be stolen away by Bless as he smites it away. They take him down though, if somebody finds a kill, not tempted, he's gonna have to be on the run. Arrow jumping forward, finds him with the Mystic Shot. But that Q out from the Twisted Fate does good amount of damage to the Ezreal and the Brom, so they have to back off. So overall, ESC, they invest, they get a steal away, but they lose the jungler. Yeah, and they're probably gonna lose a little bit more here, oh, Achilles. Well, Destiny comes in from Tempt onto the backside. He's not really in range, Crazy. He's trying to pinch down, but he, he can't find him, so it might just be the Twisted Fate ultimate used, but they will hold on to that tier one tower on the top side for the time being. Yeah, they will, but they had to use two TPs and, and the Destiny. Twisted Fate ultimate in order to make that work, and they didn't actually pick up anything on the backside of that fight. It was just a kill for the Rift Herald. It's like Rift Herald buff went over to Bless, which is sort of useless. They're lucky to go to Sunday because, I mean, he's already a monster, apparently. I mean, he doesn't need it. He's just dashing straight on to Crazy and takes him down with relative ease. Barely loses H any HP for that one. Caulfield's Warhammer is also in the inventory, so what little armor Crazy has is going to be pretty much ignored. And something new, he had flash advantage in that engagement, so as soon as Crazy started walking forward, he had no, no, there's no compunction not to just go in to take the solo kill because it was so easy considering how far back he was from the turret, and now Crazy's going to lose the turret too, so big mistake, overextension. There from the likes of Crazy, who really doesn't look comfortable in this matchup. Yeah. Well, what a surprise. Somebody plays Fiora, and they impress us, and it happens to be Sunday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it looks like he's going to abandon the turret for now. Going to back off to the base and maybe blow that TP if it's necessary to join his team, because it's another Infernal Drake that spawned. I already like this match better than the first one. Well, KT Thank certainly you, has a, a bigger advantage in this game than they did in the first one, especially yeah. as we head into the late game. And we look at how strong, how fed this Fiora oh. is. And yeah. now she has two Infernal Drakes. Oh, well, Hachani going straight over the wall. Someday joining it as well. The Chaos Storm just ticking away. Bless tries to tunnel out, but he can't do it. Bart Ultimate gets used, only finds the Braum. He'll take a little bit of damage on the back end from that Q off the Twisted Fate, but it's going to be an, another Infernal Drake. So now 16% increased AD and AP, and they kill Bless yet again. And Someday has absolutely insane statistics now with his all his kills and the two Infernal Drakes. Take a look at this. Uh, Chaos Storm dropped pretty early, and Someday has to be exhausted. Fly does end up taking Bless, just tracking him. Key does a good job of preventing Hachani from stacking up any kind of concussive blows on anybody for more kills on the side of KT. Arrow very starved in this game, still not even having completed his Iceborne Gauntlet well, yet. Looks Although like he is here, gonna look for a pinch. They find Key though, throughout the Winter's Bunny, takes a bunch of damage and has to go back off through the Magical Journey. Big burst coming out though from Loken, taking down two with the help of Tempt, and they find Someday and Hachani. KT over, staying in the bottom side, losing three members. And that's what you have to be careful about. They didn't even have most of their abilities. The only uh, ultimate global that they had that time was Bless on the wreck side, but he still managed to get in there. And there were three members. They got a little bit greedy. It was started this fight as a three versus four, and it quickly became a three versus five as Bless zooms in. The help of the Rexile, Fly and Score just not really there at the beginning to actually help out. Yep. Well, back on live, you can see ESC trying to go in for a push on the tier one mid. Will get shoved off. This attempt gets chunked out pretty low. But meanwhile, Loken and Key, not wasting any time, goes straight for this one in the bottom side. They're still not going to be able to stick around and take it. <laughs> no, they're not, so they can't actually get the gold, but they are slowly evening it up. Only about one and a half thousand now for KT with their advantage. However, ESC, they really have to get something going here. Uh, whether it's picks when these TPs come back up, that's what they'd ideally be looking for. They finally scored their first kill onto Someday, and they're building towards the Lich Bane on Temp, so maybe they can actually do something. But considering that KT has an advantage, they already have this incredibly powerful Fiora, and the Ezreal is only going to get stronger as he completes his items. It's, it is looking grim for ESC unless they can totally outmaneuver uh, the likes of KT with the Twisted Fate ult, the Rex Eye ult, and their two teleports. 
Well, so far, KT just need to tighten up on these moves that they've been making around the map because they'll gain an advantage and then they'll take two steps back, giving up several kills and allowing ESC to inch their way in. Try to take this one. The double infernal drink, though, definitely the best thing that they have going for them at this point. Yeah, absolutely, especially for the split push. I mean, what they need to do now is just ward up, play around someday who's super strong, make sure he has the necessary wards to play cautiously. Instead, they're gonna tag the Baron here a couple of times. Arrow continuing to stack that Monomune. So as he passes by the backside of the Baron pit. But yes, they have score and someday just need to be a unit right now. Play together, allow Fly to use his wave clear to keep Twisted Fate under control. He was doing such a good job of that this game. Yep. Attempt now going for that Lich Bane. You can see he's got the Sheen and the Aether Wisp in the inventory. So it's gonna be delayed heavily as he had to get the Abyssal Scepter first. Loken now working on Hurricane, still needs that. Yeah, this build is uh, really bad. Well, but... This build is really bad for ESC's current situation. You need to keep, so here's here's what went wrong. Uh, he built the Infinity Edge first, but you have to ask, okay, what's the strategy that ESC ever is trying to do? Well, it's a 1-3-1 split push, which means you need the Ash in the mid lane. To get the Ash in the mid lane, you need the Runin's Hurricane. But because he built the Infinity Edge first, he can't really wave clear in mid against the Victor. Yeah. But if he can't wave clear in mid against the Victor, he's vulnerable to his overextensions by when score comes, right? Uh-oh, oh. arrow not going to hit. Yep, Fly just going to use that Ghost, jukes it out. So, oh man. Oh boy, okay, someday going in for crazy. He needs one more hit, there it is. Nice repost on the gold card. Still gets caught by the bar, uh, Bard ultimate, but can they catch him? He dashes away, looks like he might be safe. Might just go up into the face of Bless as he does have score and Johnny backing him up. But no, he's just going to rotate straight back to the bottom side and continue working down that tier two tower. As soon as, uh, I love Someday's aggression. As soon yeah. as he sees those abilities thrown out, he immediately all in, knows that there's no danger to him, and can actually pick up a kill under that turret. Yep. Get some turret damage down too, score he zoning out. This. So as I was saying, Loken got himself into this situation oh, where he needs Hurricane. He needs BF Sword Hurricane but he built Infinity Edge. And then, in order not to get ganked by Score in the side lane, he had to build a QSS because he is very vulnerable to any kind of cocoon. So then that delayed his Hurricane, and then it even further delayed ESC Ever's ability to actually play the kind of League of Legends that they want to in this game, which is to use the Twisted Fate in the side lane alongside the Trundle in the opposite side lane because the, the Ash simply can't outwave clear the victor without the Hurricane. So just a really poor progression. Yes, Loken is, has 100% kill contribution to this game. He's been doing work, but this is a really bad build for the team comp as a whole. Yeah. We'll see how much longer it's going to be for him to finish out that Hurricane. You can see it's going to be an Ocean Drake, our third dragon to come up. So no triple Infernal. The hype is gone. Maybe one after this. If they kill on time, we'll find out. But Arrow, meanwhile, been doing a, a decent job keeping up as far as the CS goes. Only has one assist to his name, so not really getting involved in these seven kills that have been there on the side of KT. It's all been someday, for the most part. Participating in six out of seven. We'll, well go ahead and start this up, though. I mean, nobody even has assists on his team because he's had several solo kills now. That's very true. He's just been styling on crazy effectively. Yeah. Making us a believer. Looks like uh, that's going to be the Muramana completed stacking, though, for Arrow. Can start doing a good amount of damage in these trades. These team fights spoken back and forth and has the bilge water. So on his way to that Blade of the Ruined King, so he can just kite around less crazy. So this is looking pretty good for KT. Be a much better lead than they had in the first try. Yeah, there's just no answer to someday. That's. It's the biggest factor in this particular game. Now he has that Black Cleaver complete, so <clears throat> Crazy's abilities, or uh, let's say attempts to build up armor and move into this Frozen Heart are going to be somewhat stymied thanks to all the armor shreds should he get into some sort of extended engagement with this Fiora. Oh, arrow's gonna get thrown out. Nice, nice repel dodge, dodge by beautiful. Sword. That was perfectly timed, but he comes down and still gets blown up. Kido 
the one that comes away with a kill. Crazy and Bless both gonna get caught with the Bard ultimate. Not sure if that's quite where you wanted that one to go, and Crazy is gonna fall someday. Just starting to rip through, throws down the grand oh challenge onto the Bard. Look at that one, a double kill coming through. Looking for the triples, he jumps onto Loken. It's gonna be the death rate coming through, and it will confirm the triple kill someday. An absolute monster. Holy for one. cow! All right, well, finally, Achilles, I may be seeing something that the Korean teams have been doing in scrims that makes them think that this Fiora is still very strong, because this is the first game where we've actually seen a Fiora go. Oh my God! Absolutely go off. He's just gonna dive onto Bless here in the middle of the base, taking a, a good amount of damage from that. Cannot finalize the kill, but my god, you can see just how much damage he's able to do by himself. Wow, that was really impressive yeah. from someday. So the other teams just need to realize, like, okay, there's a difference between Fiora being really good and someday being really good at Fiora. Yeah, and that was a great dodge, oh. and Bless and the rest of ESC get the knock up, the exhaust, everything. They commit everything to score. Not the best gravity field right there. It should have been placed a little bit further forward by Fly, but they still end up making it work. But someday right here, I mean, the repost, helping out get that kill, and then just the, the speed he has dashing forward to clean up this fight is absolutely ridiculous. Loken uses his QSS, doesn't matter. Ends up falling anyway. Wow. Beautifully played by Someday in that fight. Eight, one, and two now on the Fiora. You can tell he just doesn't give a damn about farming at this point. He's uh, had crazy keeping up with him, but the kills are now his source of income. Absolutely. He has, he has made the enemy champions his gold pinatas. Yeah, that's right. Well, he's, he's going for a Bloodthirster now, too. Uh, he, yeah. I was curious what he was going to do with that Giant's Belt. Yeah, Giant's Belt vamp set for his side. Ah, I'm just going to go pick up the Bloodthirster. I just need a little bit of extra HP just in case. It's my just cushion right there in case anything goes wrong. Bit surprised that you wouldn't buy a GA, but it's okay. I mean, he's not even getting close to dying at this point. Well, he is. He is an 8, 1, and 2 Fiora in this game. Yes, you don't, I, need, the, I, you don't need the look, GA. No one can kill you. <laughs> look, I'm just glad we finally get to see this. And of course, an 8, 1, and 2 Fiora is going to take over the game. We, we knew that regardless of what we had seen in previous games. But what surprises me is that off of one gank, this Fiora was winning that Trundle matchup incredibly hard and had the solo kill all-in potential. So that's that's the information that I needed to understand why this pick was coming through. All right, well, but crazy. nobody else has been able to do it, so. Yep. Crazy's at like half HP. Meanwhile, up at the top side, Barl Ultimate used. Not a couple members, and he is just getting chunked out. Fly gonna chase forward, the Chaos Storm to finish him off. Something coming around the backside, though, gets locked up by the gold card. They don't have the damage to finalize it. Crazy is just gonna go down. Someday finishes him, and Arrow going really aggressive into the base with the Arcane Shift, able to finish off Bless. A three for zero, and that's going to be Baron going over to KT Rolster. Plus, more than likely, this mid inhibitor. Yeah, that uh, aggressive play by Arrow there. He's been getting a little bit of jealous, I think, of all the kills that Someday's gotten in this game. Arrow. I can make plays too. Oh boy, to Johnny though. Taking a good amount of damage from Loken. Arrow trying to trade this one back. A couple more. Oh, he missed the Mystic oh, Shot. Oh, he whips it. Still goes <laughs> down to the ignite from a Johnny. But that's going to be two less Baron buffs on the side of KT. So uh, a slight reprieve for ESC. They hold on to that mid inhibitor for the time being. But KT more than likely going to be able to take that in the next couple minutes. Well, it doesn't really matter if Arrow died right there because Someday and Fly are still alive. And that's what actually matters for pushing into this base right now. As I said, Arrow probably getting a little bit jealous. Arrow is actually, out of all the players in the league, number two in overall kills right now, a bit surprisingly. So uh, he's been not this game. Definitely cleaning up a lot this season. Prey is number one currently. Well, someday is trying to become a contender with his nine that he's picked up for himself. I wonder how many. I wonder what the, the figure is now. I forget how many times Duke died yesterday. Uh, has... Duke has 13 deaths this season. Okay, so he more than doubled his deaths in one best of three. Yeah, it it is. Also worth pointing out that uh, none of the players except for Winged in terms of deaths. Winged actually only has 11 deaths, surprisingly. Um, He's been but, playing really well. Yeah, he has been. But none of the other players besides Winged uh, that have fewer deaths than him have played all of the games, which is expected. So Duke, Duke and Winged are number one and number two in terms of players that have played every single game for their team. Nice. 
Oh, glad to sh uh, see Wings showing up. I think he's been uh, the star performer on the side. I Genera. love watching his Thunderlord's graves. Oh yeah, that, that has been awesome to see. That him. was just filthy. But okay, that's gonna be Mountain Drake. So Infernal Ocean and Mountain were our three elements. Will be the last one for the Elder Drake spawns. All of them in the hands of KT Rolster. All right, oh, well, it's gonna be dirty. They're looking for well. There goes your death brush. Yeah, nice little attempt right there. Just trying to stall up the Fiora, but they don't have any turrets any longer. And either the mid or the bottom lane, Fiora, just trying to slowly make sure that they get all the objectives someday very rapidly, destroying this top lane turret. And he got a QSS after his, so it's just a, <laughs> it's a safety giant's belt. Makes it feel good, I guess. Yeah. Well. No one can even go try to answer someday. They're just gonna try to 5v4 on the bot side, but even that's not gonna work out. So someday's just gonna get two inhibitors for themselves. I wonder what he was gonna do with this giant spell. Maybe a Randuin? A Randuin? Yeah, it must be a Randuin. Let's pull out a Warbox. Screw it. Bard Ultimate not gonna connect. Fly. Not gonna get jumped on off the backside of that Ash arrow. And now here comes someday down to the bottom side. Temp already oh pretty low. Draws a red card of all things. And the Repose is there. And they are just getting swept through Loken. The only one that can make it back to the sanctity of the fountain. And the rest of the base is going to crumble around him as KT pushes in with the Baron Empowered Minions. So 32 minutes on the clock. KT taking out game one over ESC Ever, who uh, certainly struggled under the pressure of that Fiora from someday. Yeah, they're going to all go oh, on. They want Loken. Can they get him? No, oh, they can't. Oh, oh man. Scum back someday and fly. <laughs> Finish it off. An arrow just gonna further ruin his KDA, finishing up with a 3 4 and 5 <laughs> instead of a 3 3 5. That's right, he wasn't concerned about the KDA, Achilles. It's just the total kills that I that's, know. That's, that's where you got it. That's the bloodthirsty as real. That's the stat he wants this season, apparently. Well, uh, that was a very different game than game number one, where we saw it very even at 35 minutes. This one ends in 32 minutes with an absolutely dominating performance by Someday on the Fiora, finally validating perhaps all the Fiora picks that we've seen here in Korea because no one else has been able to make it shine quite like that. Yeah, that was uh, it's pretty disgusting to watch. When you can have a tank trundle just get halved with his HP and a couple auto attacks, it's uh